My name is Robert. I'm located in ST Taipei. Um, I will uh, conduct the presentation for the coming uh, 90 minutes. So um, I'm coming from ST Microelectronics. I'm in charge of uh, analog MEMS and the sensors product group, uh, um, technical marketing and uh, application team in Taiwan. So the following 90 minutes, um, I want to share some sensors experience in the industrial by our company and probably will be a little bit commercial and uh, uh, market information. So uh, please just feel, feel free to raise up any question during the presentation. Um, it can be a more interactive. If you want, we can have a question and answer together in the same time. Okay, so you can just call me Robert and uh, I will be walking around to you and don't hesitate to raise up the question if the presentation is not clear enough. Okay, so um, as the subject we are talking about is the um, analog MEMS enable the smart device, mobile device. So why and how? So this is the coming change and the challenge in the world. So first, the people is increasing. So in 2015, the people will be have additional 2.3 billion people. And among these 2.3 billion people, we have 1. billion people will have age more than 60 years old. So people is getting older and they have a longer life and stay in the world longer. And in the meantime, you can see that a lot of emerging company, a country, they have a lot of middle layer class people increase about 1.3 billion. So people is changing. The people's age is changing also. So how we can tackle these kind of uh, changes in the world? So it's following our next uh, uh, idea that we, we are believing there will be more and more smart device. So smart device is the machine we have today. But this device is a little bit different like before. Before we tend to call it commercial, consumer and communication, the three things. But today, all of them are mixed together, and that becomes smarter. Okay, so how make the device? How to make these devices smarter, and how it will become the the, the different market to address this kind of uh, change and the challenge? So let's see the following slides. How sensors enable the smart world? So uh, I think you 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 remember this. It's not a new. It's around uh, three four years before. So when the first time we saw the Apple's phone, when we change the orientation of this phone, the, the screen will rotate by itself automatically, right? Everybody remember. It's, uh, it's something interesting, but uh, how, how, how we can make it? So simply, we have uh, this kind of uh, sensor inside our mobile device. This is the first uh, uh, motion sensors in the mobile device. It's called an accelerometer or somebody call it G-sensor. So this device is simply have a mechanical parts inside the phone and then we can detect the, the, the acceleration or gravity. Inside the physics, gravity and acceleration is the same. So we use this kind of uh, gravity sensor or accelerometer that we enable this kind of auto orientation detection. Then we know that not only for this function, we can increase this kind of uh, feature into kind of uh, tilt sensor. So in some apps in a mobile phone with this kind of accelerometer, so we can have a, a kind of a label, la label meter that uh, you put on a plant, you can know exactly is a vertical or horizontal or exactly in the, in the, in the, in the position. This is also thanks to the accelerometer. So not only one function and you have two. Then some smart guys or some interesting guys start to use more function for this kind of accelerometer. So this is kind of uh, apps for, from the uh, uh, APV store. So what is the function? So simply, uh, when, when the people sleep, especially for those people like us, we normally we don't sleep well. We have a lot of conference calls and so on, right? So uh, this, this kind of uh, application is telling you whether you are sleeping well and you are in which kind of uh, sleeping mode. So it categorizes the sleep into the awake, dreamy, deep sleep. So from this time period, you will know whether you are really in a deep sleep or you are awake. You, you lie there, but you don't really sleep. So after eight hours, you still feel very sleepy. Why? Because most of the time you are awake. So how to know this? So simply, you just put your mobile phone close by your, 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 your bed. 
and this this mobile phone can detect the vibration and the frequency where you sleep and this uh, is a kind of a complex uh, algorithm that people can be able to know uh, how, how you sleep so how often you rotate how often you move around of course I'm talking about a standard uh, situation where when you are sleep alone okay when you sleep with your kids they may be vibrated a bit so basically for example this is the one for my my personal so you can see that I start from 12 then uh, 2 o'clock I wake up why because uh, my son is very young and uh, he's crying so I need to wake up so you can know all this kind of uh, vibration even though I know that uh, we sleep around the 8 hours at 9 but eventually the quality of sleeping is not good okay this is not kind of medical application but this can give you some hint of the interesting things happen on your phone so with the simple accelerometer coming from the a screen rotation then the level meter then you can detect also this kind of uh, interesting application so with one sensor with a lot of uh, creative idea or imagination then we see the world is different then um, three two years ago you will start to see kind of device called a gyroscope so when the time when uh, Mr. Steve Jobs showed this everybody was very excited what is the gyroscope in fact, the gyroscope is a moving accelerometer. So inside this mechanical, uh, the parts is moving um, frequently. So we use a kind of physics uh, formula to come out the uh, angular velocity. So uh, at the beginning, for this kind of gyroscope, the first purpose is for kind of gaming application, so you can play the game. Instead of using acceleration, you're using the angular velocity to play uh, with a, a fast response and a better quality of the movement detection so this is one of application again then few months after somebody come out a good idea so use this kind of uh, gyroscope you know uh, when you are trying to make this kind of uh, map in your house or somewhere else you have a lot of problem because you need to move all the furniture and you need to measure the distance right but this kind of application very simple you just stand in the middle of the room so you use your phone you take a picture for each corner and when you take a round picture then it's coming out so how you make this simply he can tell you what is the angle you moved and with this kind of uh, complex uh, calculation then you can compose this kind of map again this is another application so as a Chinese people, we are tend to tear down the world to understand what is the true meaning. So again, we do the same thing. So smart Chinese character, maybe some Chinese people, you know that we can tear down the world, but we can use the same way for English as well. So we tear down the smart as S, M, and art. So what does it mean? Today we have a machine, we have a microcontroller. No matter how fast the microcontroller, the speed it is, how big the memory size it will be, it doesn't make anything different but when you have a sensor you, when you have a sensor just like a people you have uh, your brain but you have uh, your eyes you have uh, ears you have your hand touch you have uh, feeling then plus the art what does mean the art or the art means the applications the apps so when you have a brain then you have all the sensor around you with all the feedback from your sensor and you come out some art you create the smart very easy to remember okay so we see that from recent years more and more sensors come to the world and this is also the objective why our company set up this team and to spend the effort to make more and more sensors so just give you a brief idea today we have all the motion sensors so we have a accelerometer, gyroscope, e-campus, and the combo, the, the, the sensor together. Basically, from hardware point of view, it's just a simple I2C sensors. So you have uh, devices, you come out I2C, and you got, get out the data. But inside, the, 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 the state of the, the heart is, is quite different. So sometimes you get an acceleration, you get angular velocity, you get a magnetic field, you get a pressure. So with from outside point of view it's a simple but inside is very complex so not only the motion so we have also the touch touch sensors 
So uh, we have uh, resistive, capacitive, different kind of uh, sensors. So for your touch, and later on I will fully elaborate. Uh, it's the same touch, but what what we make the difference? Then we have uh, voice, acoustic. We have a microphone, speaker. We have a light. We have a bio sensor. We have a humidity. We have a temperature, pressure. This is all the sensor we have today, and it's coming out more and more. The all the sensor. Among them is different, but there's only one thing is in common that they are all made by semiconductor. They are all made by silicon. Why? Very simple, because uh, this kind of sensor is not alone in the world. They 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 they, they, they are before, but they are existing in different way. So they can make by mechanical. They can make by different kind of uh, uh, material. But when it moves to semiconductor, so you can make it very small. And it can communicate with the digital world easily. So it's a silicon, silicon is a semiconductor process. It will be very low power, and it can be mass production, and it will be very cost effective. So just go before I remember uh, when the time I start to have uh, this kind of business. I had worked with this division for five years. So starting from the first day that time, the Jascope is uh, one access two dollars. Two US dollars. So three axes is kind of six dollars. So until today, the six axes, uh, the three axes together in one chip is almost uh, less than one point five dollars. So the price is dropping fast, but it's still sustainable. Why? As you know, the history for semiconductor. Once you have a sta stable year, you have a volume, you have economic scale, then the cost can be justified. So these are things that we today has more and more sensors, but the cost will be not increased. Okay, so this is advantage. So before we have a sensor, but it can maybe it's too expensive, the people is not able to afford. But now the sensors are able to reach each kind of people, get into any kind of application. So these kind of changes make the smart devices even smarter. So what you will see is that so first devices you see the the G sensor in the mobile phone, then you have a e-compass, then you have a gyro, then later you have a pressure sensor, then you may have more and more sensor in your smart devices with the same cost. Okay, so uh just to share with you what is the recent sensors on the market. For example, like uh, recently you see the Galaxy S3. So this is all the tear down from ice supply. So you can simply see that they are not only using the sensor, they are using the combo sensor. So for example, they are using our uh, six axis uh, devices with a gyro and a accelerometer in one chip. Not alone, they are putting a pressure sensor also. So why pressure sensor? Later I will explain you. This is not only for the simple the outdoor activity, but in the coming future for the indoor navigation. This is a very important application and this will dramatically change the usage of the the, the sensors. Okay. Of course you cannot forget the tap, so you can see that even for the tablet, uh, not only the Android or Windows 8. I attended the Windows Win 8 uh, um, Release, month, release conference on Friday. I was there, and uh, I think you, you, you know, you all know that for all the Win 8 convertible laptop and uh, tablet, the NetX sensor is mandatory on the reference design. Why? First, because you have uh, more and more applications. So, if you want to run this application, you all need to have all these sensors. So, from computer only feature, then now it's moved to computer and the consumer and the communication all together. And one sense is that they are getting smarter altogether. So uh, iPhone 5 still, uh, the sensors there, and they are keep on moving for this direction. So uh, this, the, the, these sensors, what exactly it is? Maybe you know already uh, partially the sensors, but uh, in the following few pages, I will introduce one by one to give you some idea for what exactly the sensor. So uh, when we talk about the motion sensors, basically it can be uh, categorized by uh, maybe three or four. The first one is a uh, accelerometer. So you accelerometer is simply just to understand the acceleration. 
then the uh, gyroscope you know, you 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 start to understand the angular velocity. So in, instead of uh, acceleration, you know better for the velocity. Then for magnetometer, and then you can have uh, the understanding for the orientation. So why we need these three uh, three sensor? Very simple. In the world, uh, everything moves by the speed. Okay, velocity. So you need to know what is the velocity. And G, the, the accelerometer, he can give you the the velocity, but it's not easy because when you have integral the the um, uh, acceleration into the velocity, it's very difficult to to have accurate velocity. So that's why you need to have a, a gyroscope to coming out the the true velocity. But for the G sensor, the good thing is that he can always tell you what is up and down because of the gravity. So this is the only device that today you can understand where you, where, where, where you locate your phone. You can imagine today when you hand your phone. So it can be in any kind of orientation, but you can always know what is the, the vertical, vertical position. Okay. And for the, for the compass, this is the only one in the world can tell you what is the east, west, south, and north because the magnetic field. So with all these three sensors together, so you come out a better description of the world and the position you are moving. So uh, G sensor is the first motion sensor used uh, broadly on the uh, mobile phone application. Today, almost every uh, mobile device, no matter it's high end or low end, you need to have this. Why? Simply, you need to rotate your screen. People tend to use uh, portrait or landscape. But if you can imagine, if you need to always switch, switch the, the screen orientation, that will be very troublesome. So people used to use this already. So uh, for, the, uh, mo for the smartphone, this kind of device is almost 100% bundle rate. So what is this device? Uh, the formula is very simple. So it's like a, it's like a, a, a spring with a mass. So basically, uh, when the device is moving, when you have uh, force, so it will start to move. Then uh, we can de we can uh, measure the distance in these two area with uh, uh, different distance. The the capacitance in between will be changed. So measuring this kind of uh, capacitance change, so we can come out the movement and understand the acceleration. So this is the basic theory for the uh, acceleration uh, accelerometer. Okay, so uh, this kind of device is using widely now um, many application coming out, and this one is a basic and the fundamental of the the motion sensor must be used in a mobile application. Then we have a gyro. Gyro, gyro is a little bit complex, but it's not really so complex. It's using the same theory, but the difference is that you must move. So you have a driving mode for your device. Then with a different kind of direction, you can get the angular velocity by x. Y, Z, different axis. Uh, but normally we call it Euro pitch. Okay, so with this kind of uh, movement, and we measure, then we come out a different axis uh, angular velocity. So th th this one is important because uh, before we don't have we don't have the idea how to come out a velocity, but once we have the gyroscope, then we can have this value. Okay, so magnetic sensor, uh, some people say this is meant, but honestly, it's not a meant, so it's a different kind of material. So you use a kind of uh, uh, inductive uh, devices to understand the, the, the magnetic field in the, in the world. So you need to have uh, three different orientation sensor then to able to know the uh, exactly uh, magnetic field. Then uh, we have a new one called the uh, attimator. In fact, attimator is kind of uh, precise pressure pressure sensor. So we know that in certain kind of uh, attitude, the atmosphere pressure will be changed uh, accordingly. So when you did, when you have a very high accuracy and a very sensitive pressure sensor, so you are able to. Uh, to calculate what is the distance. Today, the technology for us is able to measure around 20 centimeter. So you can tell whether you are 20 centimeter or 20 centimeter higher. And this is useful for the indoor navigation because uh, when you walk into the building, the so indoor navigation is you you need to know not only the location where you are but also the 
different floor. So with this uh, altimeter, then you're able to tell where you are. Okay, uh, for the touch sensor, uh, basically touch sensor was composed by two parts. The first part is the touch touch uh, touch area or we can normally we, we 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 call it TP. So TP is kind of ITO mount on, on the surface of the display. So this is nothing to do with uh, IC. This is kind of different kind of pattern. Uh, you have ITO uh, on, on it then uh, with the measurement of all the capacitance change you have a controller to tell what kind of the uh, capacitance value here you are. So um, for the TP Today we have a different kind, many different kind of uh, stack. So uh, we have uh, single glass, we have uh, film. So film means that you have a film for ITO that you pass on, on top of the TFT. And sometimes you have some air gap in between, sometimes you don't have. So this is the common one you have. But in the coming future, the people tend to make the TP on the TFT directly, so we coming out the on sale and in sale concept. So with this kind of a different uh, different stake of the touch, so you need to have a different kind of uh, uh, touch sensor to understand exactly and to get out the the noise of your 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 device. So sometimes this kind of a sensor is sensitive, but sometimes when it become too sensitive, then we will have a problem. So you need you always need to run in out the uh, Algorithm to tell what, what exactly the situation it is. Then a microphone. So microphone is nothing new, right? It's uh, been a long time, long, long time we have this kind of device. But before the, the microphone is not a semi is not made by semiconductor. We call it ECM. So it's made by chemical or the uh, the the other uh, material. So uh, membrane itself is is not silicon. Okay, the change for the mass microphone is that we start to change the membrane from the original material into the silicon. So when, when we when we able to make the uh, semiconductor very very thin, and this semiconductor membrane can vibrate with your sound pressure. So this is the 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 difference with uh, uh, the mass micro uh, the, the microphone before. So what is the advantage for this kind of uh, Mass microphone. First, for this kind of mass microphone, we need to have a small two part. So first part is a main sensor. So it's made uh, similar like a mass process. So you need to make a, a very thin membrane to detect the external sound pressure. Then, and this kind of uh, uh, membrane is also the capacitive sensors. So uh, you translate the capacitor sensors. Then you need to have an ASIC. To translate this uh, vibration into uh, the voice level, so when we start to make this kind of uh, microphone in a silicon process, the good thing is that we can make this microphone become smaller, thinner, and is able to pass the SMT. Because before you cannot, why? Because you uh, the, the SMT the temperature is very high, it's 230, 50 degree. So normally, if you put the ECM on this process, then you have an issue. So, uh, but for this kind of microphone, as the material is all came from a silicon, so you don't have an issue. So you can just simply put this kind of microphone into the SMT process. But this is not the only uh, advantage. Uh, the, the, the most advantage is the coming uh, main key parameter, key parameter here. So first is the SNR. So SNR stands for uh, signal and uh, noise ratio. So. Uh, Basically, you need to you need to have a higher SNR, then you are able to make a better uh, mic mic microphone. Is is in general. Second is a sensitivity matching. What does it mean a sensitivity matching? Today, uh, there's one of a concept called a microphone array. So probably you know already for your mobile phone, uh, you don't have uh, only one microphone in, inside. Sometimes you have a two, and even three, and even four. Why? Okay, today uh, we are in a noisy environment. You have the voice from the people you want to listen, but you have also the voice you don't want to listen, for example, like external noise and so on. So we need to have a kind of a microphone array to move out the, the, the noise or the voice you don't like. So how do you do? So you put a microphone in different location. By different distance, you can tell whether this one is close to you or far away from you. Uh, 
So to, to, to make this kind of uh, uh, measurement or algorithm, basically you need to have your own microphone very similar each other. So this is the sensitivity. So if you have a different kind of sensitivity, by the source you cannot compare, then you, can, you are not able to run the, the, the noise cancellation well. So you need to have uh, sensitivity matching. And as you know, the semiconductor is the most uh, standardized process for across whatever the application. So with the main process, you can have a very, very narrow sensitivity distribution. So they are matching each other closely. Okay, and also by the mass microphone semiconductor process, you can have a low power consumption, and of course you can reduce the size of your microphone. That's the trend. Today, the price of the mass microphone is still higher than the ECM, but it's dropping very fast with the volume picking up. I believe in the soon or coming future, this kind of device will be have equal cost because today, once you have a volume, then then your cost can be justified. So uh, we are believe this will be coming very soon. Okay, so something coming shortly. Okay, I, I tend to use uh, now and the uh, sh shortcoming future and uh, something still uh, a little bit uh, longer term. Okay, so uh, this is kind of application that we may see uh, in you um, know in, in fact it's already appear. So we 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 have a more and more smart TV. Okay, kind of a smart device. What does it mean a smart TV? So we are, when, when our TV can communicate, connect it with uh, internet, so we can do a lot of uh, different kind of application. And with some sensor, we can do some interesting application. So today at home, your TV is the biggest screen of your electric, electrical devices. So not only looking for the TV or DVD, probably you want to do more things with this display. So how to do it. So with this kind of a smart TV approach, then you can have something new and something different. So you can see that starting from last year, the penetration for the smart TV is getting more and more. Because almost the additional cost is not so high, but you can have a lot of different features. So some, some people may confuse that smart TV is a TV, but in fact it's not a TV, it's a box. It can be bundled in the TV, but most likely it can be a box. For example, this is a Vizio box. So with a, a simple box, with the internet access, with a remote, then uh, your TV becomes like a, a smart TV. So when your TV becomes smarter, what would be the difference? This remote will be no longer the remote you have today at your home. You, have, you need to have a different smart remote. Uh, one of our applications that uh, people like to talk to communicate with your friend with bigger screen with high definition. So this uh, this TV can play the Skype. A uh, lot of uh, application now today for the video conference, audio conference. So you can imagine once you put your microphone on the TV, the distance will be very far. So most likely the people will not hear you. But who who will be most close to you? Your 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 remote. So your remote will be like this. So when you want to talk, you can. Just use this, talk to them, and the voice will be very good. And even though you don't want to hand it, you can put on TV uh, in front of you. Then with uh, several microphones, you can do the beamforming. You can do a noise cancellation to have uh, your voice become very clear. So this is the trend that your remote will have a microphone. And more than two microphones on it. And this microphone will enable the good quality of the audio conference to enhance your video conference. So this is first thing. And second thing is that b before you just uh, use your remote to switch the different channel and uh, voice up and voice down. But with the smart TV, you can go the internet, you can go to Facebook, you can play the game, the motion game like the Wii. So your remote will not uh, able to support this kind of application with a single key. So what will you do? You put the motion sensors on your remote. So your remote becomes like a, a 3D mouse. So instead of putting your hand on the table, then you can just move your hand like this way and the cursor is moving around. Then you can double click, you can simple click get into the website to enhance your user experience, not only on a table, but also in the living room. So this is one thing. And you turn around this table, yeah, this remote becomes like a keyboard. 
So you need to detect what the mode you are. So simply, you can use a G sensor. So when you flip your your remote, it, it detect automatically the keyboard mode that you can start to switch. So with all this smart idea, so coming out more and more fit, feature. So th this remote will become very useful, an uh, important tool in your home. Okay. So this is kind of trend you will see very. Uh, very fast get into the market. So what do we have here? So we have uh, the 9-axis motion sensor. So to, to do the 3D remote, we have a uh, touchpad. Some people, they don't like to uh, use motion. They want to use your hand to move a little bit or room in, room out by your uh, finger. So you can still have a touchpad here. And you have uh, your microphone here. So this is already in the market. But what else you can see that we put some security sensor or environment sensor. Today, if the remote controller is with you, so if you have a temperature sensor on it, you have a humidity sensor on it, maybe you have a CO2 sensor, you have a, the other sensor. Like, likewise, in Taiwan, in the winter time, we have some accident, accident from time to time that the, the, the leakage of the, the gas generate or the CO2 or the CO, uh, make the, the close rooms people die. So when you have this kind of sensor, then you can tell. Then you can do some action, for example, shut down or make, an make a call to the policeman or whatever. So you can do a lot of things. For the humidity and temperature, you can consider. Um, the comfortable room for the people is a combination for the temperature and the humidity. So you can, if you know exactly your humidity level and the temperature level, so you can automatically adjust your air condition. To be the comfortable way you like. So this is one of the idea. Maybe we can brainstorm together. Once you have a more and more sensor with you, physically in different location, then you can generate a lot of different kind of application. And again, this is very important, especially in the commercial world. Why? Because everybody is doing TV. Everybody is doing Android. But what's the difference? With this kind of a sensor, even though with the same sensor with different application, we make a differentiation. And this differentiation creates a value. So this is a very important message among everybody. So we have a common platform, common operation system, common shape, same di display size. But what's the difference? So this kind of uh, sensor and this kind of uh, application coming out from sensor really make a difference because this kind of uh, difference will touch the people's feeling and this feeling make the people tend to make the choice okay so this is one of the uh, application uh, probably uh, I can elaborate a little bit uh, not only for the sensor itself is important but also the survey part so uh, here I want to just explain you a little bit about the history okay so all the sensor in, uh, in, in, for example, the motion sensor, the, the original raw data is kind of physical unit, like uh, acceleration, like uh, the uh, gravity, like uh, the uh, angular velocity, and like the uh, magnetic field. Those kind of uh, data is, is not useful for the survey makers. So, so what, we, what should we do? We need to do some kind of uh, sensor fusion. So we, 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 we make all, we, we, Calculate all these raw data and fuse is coming fuse the data and coming out the the real uh un, the parameter that the survey people can do. For example, for the uh, nine axis uh, sensor, so the real data the engineer can use is a quaternion, is a heading, is a orientation, your raw pitch, and the linear acceleration and the gravity. So this require the sensor fusion to do it. Okay, so this is that, that's why, uh, based on our experience, we make the highway first. That we, we, we know that the survey is equally important. So we spend a lot of effort on this survey uh, integration and the sensor fusion library development. So this is very important for the makers. Okay, why? Because uh, uh, basically all these parts is the physics, physics part. For the electronics engineer, they are not familiar with this. They, they are more familiar with how to use this data. So this is mandatory to have the people 
uh, the supplier able to make all this survey effort before they release the product to the customer. So this is one important message that we need to display. So uh, today in the Windows and in the Android, it's just like this. Basically, even though the OS is quite much different, but the, 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 the structure is almost the same. Uh, maybe I can elaborate a little bit for the, the, the main difference. Uh, for the Android, uh, the way what they are doing today is that they use a different sensor and coming out of raw data and you put the software running on the Android system. So quite straightforward and quite simple. But the difference is that for Android is open source. So you, you are able to get a lot of information and uh, all the source code from Android, but Windows is not. So Windows is tend to use a different way for operation. So for Windows 8, the way they operate is with microcontroller outside, we, we call it sensor hub. So all the sensor fusion calibration will be running out. Then you use uh, the HID I2C or HID USB to connect the, the, the parameter you want from, from the system. So this is a different way. So. Uh, this slide just to explain you what, what will be the difference. So uh, this is the different sensor. So based on the I square C, you come out the the, the data is um, the the mini Gauss, mini G, and LSB for the gyro. So you can come out this data directly, but this is not good enough. You need to have a calibration library here also. But again, it's also still not enough. Because they need a rotation vector, linear acceleration, gravity, and orientation. So what do you do? Then you have need to have an engine here. The library will help to combine the different data that make the output for the for the use for the software developer to to do it. So this is basically this is the the Android system after Android 2.3. Okay, but for the Windows, the the different thing is that. Uh, they, do, they do not allow the people to do like this. So what they do is that they have an external uh, sensor controller. So that we need to fuse all the data here, then use the HID SQC and HID USB to come out the data by definition of Microsoft to, to upload the, the information. So this is difference. It's a bit complex here. Okay. Okay. So, uh, besides all the, all, all, all application you see here already, so with the current existing sensor, you can do some difference. For example, like uh, uh, the OIS in, two, in next year, 2013, will be an important uh, feature for the, for the uh, mobile phone and maybe later on also the tablet. What is the OIS? OIS stands for the Optical Image Stabilization. So today we almost have the camera for all the portable devices, mobile phone and tablet almost everywhere we have a very high resolution but when the time we are increasing our resolution we are not able to sustain a stable hand because you are moving around so we take a video it's very high high quality but uh, you see the high quality is moving around so it will be a troublesome so how to how to do it so before you will say yeah we have uh, we have an image stabilization but basically it's not a real image stabilization it's kind of EIS electrical so so they they use some software to make the compensation so once you enable this eis the quality of the picture is become not so good and the effectiveness of this eis is not so good as well so what coming out of OIS, this is a real solution that using the external gyroscope to detect your orientation so detect your movement and when you have you come out of the movement, you, you put this data into a controller and you have an actuator to compensate this kind of movement. So it's using, the, it's using the optical way to compensate directly. So this kind of uh, compensation is real time and is always running. So no matter how you move, the, uh, the, the result will be very good. Okay, so this is the trend and we will see more on the application in the mobile phone. So yeah, uh, the the actuator looks like this. So the camera is not still. So um, you have a mechanical part to drive the orientation of your microphone. Sorry, not microphone, the camera. Then uh, your image is becoming stable. So this is the the theory. So running for this application, you need to have a very uh, 
high performance gyroscope to to get this application, and this will change a lot for your user experience for the video recording. Not only for the handheld application, we see more and more in the car, in the safety, in the human uh, machine interface improvement. So uh, you can see that today we have a lot of uh, smart car uh, environment is just using this kind of sensor to detect what exactly the, the scenario, then take some action to, to, to compensate. So for airbag, for for kind of car safety, for um, inside the car you do some uh, interaction for your multimedia center, so you use all these sensors to do the, the, the job. Okay. So this is just simply to let you know that uh, for the different kind of application you may uh, need different kind of uh, accelerometer. So for some parameter, for the full, full scale, for the temperature, for the response time, so you need to fine tune still a little bit of the parameter to adapt the different kind of application. Okay. If you have any question, don't hesitate because or I will run very fast to 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 the end. Uh, just don't hesitate. Raise up your hand, and I can try my best to answer if you have any question. Okay. And then uh, you see more and more the pressure sensor on the mobile device. So this at the beginning stage is mainly for the outdoor activity. So you have a pressure sensor, then you know exactly the attitude you are. When you go mountain climbing, you go hiking, then you you know uh, the attitude first. And second, if you are staying in the same attitude, you can uh, measure the, the 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 pressure change. So you can also do this kind of application for barometer. So you can uh, forecast the weather is changing, is getting better or getting worse because the the um, the air pressure was also related to the the um, the humidity of the environment. So if the the pressure is changing in the same attitude, when it's become uh, very high, then get the 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 weather is getting fine. In the opposite, then will we'll become bad. So storm storm may be coming for that. Okay. So the pressure sensor itself is uh, not capacitance; it's a resistance uh, uh, sensor. So based on the resistance value change, you, then you can uh, come in, you can come in out the all the different sensors, uh, application and the information. So coming to the uh, in cell and on cell. So uh, I use this slide to elaborate a bit for the different structure. So uh, on cell and the in cell, basically you don't have any TP. The TP is already inside the TFT panel. The, the difference is that uh, for the on sale, you put the ITO sensor on the surface of the TFT, and in sale, even though you put the ITO in the middle of the, the TFT. So this one is difficult, and this one is even more difficult to to get rid of the noisy environment. Uh, but this one, uh, if you are able to reach this kind of uh, structure first, uh, you reduce the cost. Second. We will reduce the thickness of uh, your TP. So this will be a trend in the coming future. And today we see some supply already have this kind of uh, structure released to market. And this will be coming very soon for the TFT maker. And this change probably will change the nature of the current uh, touch panel ecosystem. So before you need to, you, you, you will buy a TFT maker, then you will have an ITO maker and Making the nomination together, but in the coming future it will be only one. So of course it's a risk for the ITO maker, but uh, this is also the good thing for the uh, panel maker that they can get some advantage for this kind of integration. Okay, so for the touch, so what do we do? Uh, in order to enhance the user experience and the uh, uh, application for the for 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 the touch, so. Uh, for the for the new devices, we are we are doing kind of the proximity and the recognition uh, from the touch panel. How to do it? Okay, uh, we define a hover and okay. Basically, when you have a display, so when you touch, you touch. So basically, your finger you touch the display, but when you move your finger out, in certain distance, we define four centimeter. We call it hovering. 
So basically, you don't need to touch. You just have a one certain distance. You can still position where you are, and you can even though you have a, a Z distance for to to your display. So this we call a hover. So from four centimeter to fifteen centimeter, we call a proximity. Proximity sensor, everybody know already. But this one we are talking about using your touch screen to generate a similar function for the proximity. So what is the main, main application? Okay, I can just introduce you some, some of the case. For example, like uh, today you have a display here. So uh, you want to enable or disable him when you approaching it like a TV or like a panel. So you can, uh, you can determine that the distance. So you can enable it, the display. You enable the backlight by the distance you approach. So this kind of proximity sensor, proximity function can be used for this purpose. Hovering is the one that the people they want to have a touch function, but they don't want to really touch on the display. Like in a um, dirty environment, when you fix a car in a car factory, or when you in the kitchen, you are cooking something, your hand is with a lot of powder and things, you don't want to mess your display. Or when you are in hospital, you don't want to uh, remove your glove or you, want, you don't want to do this. So you can just simply using a certain distance to control. And even though for some application, for example, like a mobile phone, today uh, when you are uh, clicking the, the icon for, the, for example, the uh, English letter, so basically the, the corner is very small, right? So sometimes you miss touch the, the icon nearby. But what you can do is that when you are approaching this icon, it will zoom in directly this area you are going to touch. So instead of a 26 later, so when you are approaching this area, you just ring in the four. Therefore, you will be very easy to select automatically. This is kind of application thanks to the hovering technology. Okay, so how to do the hovering? Uh, there's a lot of uh, technology. Uh, Touch technology inside, so you you have a mutual and self sensing switch. You have a high SNR. You have a fast sensing frequency to enable this kind of a application. So the idea from the sensor maker, like our company point of view, we are trying to target the, the user scenario and improve the sensor performance to reach or to to com to accomplish this kind of requirement. So this is the way uh, we are we are working on it. So for the microphone, as I introduced already, that we may need more and more microphone. But sometimes the microphone can be to have the feedback. So most of the people, uh, I think you, you, you have the experience that you use an earphone, you got very good music, but you cannot hear anything outside, right? You are isolated in your music. So what we are going to do is that we are making a very, very, very small mic uh, microphone on your speaker. On your transducer, uh, on the ear, 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 earphone. So this microphone can, can receive the external voice. And on your hand, you can adjust the, the, the ratio that you want to take from external voice or you don't want. So in this one, um, you can, when you, for example, you're walking on the street, you don't want to be fully isolated. Then so you can use your phone to increase the, the, the microphone portion to understand the external environment. And also when you are talking with some people, with understanding of the in external environment noise, you can cancel this environment noise and have a better communication quality by your speaker. So this is the way that enhancing uh, this kind of uh, combination of uh, input and output Acoustic signal that you can play some uh, interesting application here. So, uh, so we can just uh, using the, uh, you can see here the very small, very, very small microphone you can put on the, on, on, on your ear, earphone. So you can do this kind of application. Okay. And also some of uh, uh, creative engineer thinking about to detect your movement of your head. So today we we well, we experienced a 3D video. But how about the 3D audio? What does it mean a 3D audio? When you walk into a room, so you have different uh, source for your 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 voice. 
And when you have a gyroscope on your head, when you detect you turn right, then you increase the volume for the right corner one, Le left, right. So you can experience that you are really in a 3D environment. So with all this uh, information coming out, we can simulate a lot of different kind of scenario. Then you will enhance the people's feeling. Uh, coming to here, I want to share one point with you that uh, we will have a more and more sense that this is the message. So I think everybody knows. So to, to make something interesting and something more, so we have a more sense coming out. But the interesting is that not only for that, this sensor can work together. So we call this sensor fusion, not the motion sensor alone. The motion sensor can work with audio sensor, can work with touch sensor, can work with uh, environment sensor. Just like human, you can imagine today, uh, when we come to one place, our feeling was not only from your eyes or ear or your smell or your temperature feeling. It's coming from everywhere, right? So when you, once you have more information, you can combine all this information together. Likewise, this kind of example, you have a voice, you have your motion, and you use your motion to control your voice. That's exactly the human's, human's real feeling. And today, I think uh, we are closing a gap from machine to a human. And this kind of sensor will help us to increase the speed to close this gap. So this is one of the important message. So all these sensors can do a lot of things. Take one example, the pickle projector. It's also made by MEMS. So this is a mirror made by silicon. So what is this mirror? This is a movable mirror. And we can control this mirror in very accurate angle and very fast speed. So why we need this mirror? Today, uh, I think you know the Pico projector, but inside the Pico projector, you have a different kind of technology. This one is called in the uh, scaling technology. So it's not using the, the LED as a source. It's using a laser, RGB laser as a source. So what do they do? So basically, you have a three, three laser as a three original of the color. So you combine the color into a one dot. Uh, you compose the color by the three different color. Means that when you come in out of one dot, you already decide this is red or green or blue or black or white. Simply to control the density of this laser so you can know the color. Then with uh, two mirror, one is horizontal, one is vertical, like the one I showed just before. So you can position all these dots in this screen. And very fast. So today, with this kind of architecture, first the efficiency is very high. So the light source you don't need to have a very big or very powerful light source because all the light was uh, almost hundred percent reflect to your your screen first. Second, you don't need to have uh, focus here because the light is that is not a uh, is not a plant. So you don't need to make the room. So every dot will be composed, each one, and very fast. So this kind of uh, technology also enable one day on your mobile phone or on your tablet that you want to share with the other people. The people requirement for the screen of the display is never stop. Will never stop. Everybody when they have a 30 inch, they want a 40. Want to have a 40. Want the 60. So uh, with the mobile phone. There's always a trade-off. This is always a di difficult decision that you want to have a bigger screen or very hard to handle or very small screen. Good handle, but it's not good quality. So this can solve the issue that you have a small one, but you can project with certain distance with a bigger screen and, and you like. But of course, it's not all the time. But sometimes when you want to share with some people, this will be a good solution. And with this kind of technology uh, innovation, then this can be it can become true. And this will not increase the the weight or or or, or ID for your portable device too much. Okay, this is something that I want to share with you. It's not only for the hardware point of view, but maybe the service and so software point of view. So we are working with the CSR on the indoor navigation solution. So what is that? 
Uh, this is one of the press release we did in August in Taipei in the museum. So indoor navigation, simply that you when when you have uh, uh, GPS outside, you know where you are. But when you move into the indoor, you don't know, right? This is the main problem. But with a more and more big building, a big area without a GPS signal, the people tend to have also the uh, indoor information. Especially, you can imagine, like uh, if you go to the uh, exhibition center, like just close by, you want to go to the different booths. You want to uh, you go to maybe later on to Taipei 101. You want to go shopping. When you get get into there, then you don't know where the store it is. By asking will be troublesome, and sometimes you lose your direction. Maybe this kind of experience you you had before, but if you know exactly where you are, and the, and the accuracy can be kind of a two to five meter. Some people always ask me, hey, if the the it's not a two meter or this is not useful for the indoor navigation. But honestly, I don't agree. Why? Because with the five meter, you have your eyes already, right? <laughs> Why you need to have an indoor navigation with two meter? We are not the blind people. Just need to rely on this. So I think a five to ten meter is the is the is the bottleneck that if we can reach, then this application will be useful. And today, this workable. And this is one of the uh, interesting application we did. So how do we do? Uh, we use the indoor navigation with all the uh, motion sensor and the, the the CSR chip. So we we were coming out the source from the Wi-Fi and the HPS to to def to, to position your, your 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 location, and we did it in a museum in Taipei. I think everybody have experienced that when you go into a museum like La Roof or New New York MoMA, and you will rent a kind of uh, uh, audio guidance, right? And you need to uh, pay some money you, with you, with a earphone, and you go in front of the exhibit. You need to press a number on the exhibit. Then you will broadcast the content of the introduction of this exhibit. With this kind of application, what we do is that we can we don't need this one at all. So use your phone. You can download the app directly. You have a map. And we, when you get into get close by this exhibit, it will pop out the audio uh, broadcast selection. So you can select English or Chinese, depends on your preference. Then you press it. Then you start to listen. So even though you don't need to see the number there, why? Because he, he know exactly where location you are. So this is one of the application for indoor navigation. Very interesting and very useful. So it can be used for the museum. It can use for the zoo. It can use for many different kind of area that you want to have a location information which is related. Of course, this com combined with a lot of uh, a commercial business opportunity. For example, like uh, today, you, when you go to some uh, shopping mall store, they have a hard sale, they have a special discount. But you don't know. So when you turn on your phone, then you know exactly where location it is. And this store in front of you, they have a special price for the shoes, for clothes. Then, then will be very effective uh, a tool for you to understand. So we believe this kind of application Will come in soon. Today the technology is already no issue at all. The only thing is the, the the infrastructure, the ecosystem. Once it's ready, then I think this application will come in very soon. So I believe next year you will see more and more mobile phone enable this kind of application. Google is pushing very hard for this. So you see that Google Map, you have already a lot of indoor map on it for the station, for the shopping mall, for the bookstore, maybe in American, maybe, but. Uh, in Asia, it's coming more and more. So what did they do? So basically, uh, when you go outside, uh, you have the, the GPS. So uh, when you have uh, you are when you get into the, uh, the in, indoor, then you have a Wi-Fi sniffer. You have a Wi-Fi and, and the GSM. Then you have a motion sensor. Why you need a motion sensor? Because this data will give you the more accurate absolute location. But uh, this kind of a sensor will give you more accurate relative location. Why? Because they use the G sensor to, to do the pedometer. So they know how many steps you are. And they, they use the e-compass to, to, to understand the, the gyroscope to understand you are turning right or turning left. So using different steps, using different orientation, then you can identify the 
the, the, the track, the, the area you are, you are working on. So with all these sensors together, and they have a cloud service to coming out some calculation and reference, so you are able to do this kind of uh, application. So this is a few of the examples what we have ever done before. This kind of device is very small and you are able to identify your location uh, precisely for, for any kind of uh, location. So this is one of our application in Taiwan getting very uh, popular. We call the DVR, the, the tracking e-tracking system. Uh, when you are driving in Taiwan, I don't know whether you have a foreigner, maybe you have no experience, but you can try. It's a very exciting experience. <laughs> so uh, when you have this kind of uh, machine, then you are able to recognize all the accidents or people coming out. They can give you a lot of uh, real-time information in to enhance this kind of device. Okay, uh, so not only for uh, that kind of application for some sports uh, is coming more and more popular for the for the humans uh, reference, and the the indoor navigation uh, not only for the commercial purpose we have also some uh, customer or interesting application. For example, like we are working with the the firemen that you know when you have, you you have uh, some fire inside the building. The very brave people, they always come in first time, but eventually you don't know where they are. So with a central system, you can know their location, what is the track they are. So eventually, if you have a problem, the people can get them out very fast. This is useful for the firemen. But this is also useful for some special policemen, or maybe for some kids, or for some old men. They lost their mind. They cannot able to ask for help. This can be many, many different kind of application. Okay, and plus the argumental reality is with very is becoming very popular in the in the market. So we combine more and more information together. We generate a lot of uh, good idea. Okay, so uh, also we have uh, kind of application we call the remote monitoring. That today we have a mobile phone with us all the time, and this mobile phone is always connected to the internet. Okay, with internet you can connect to the hospital, you can connect to your family, your friend, and so on. So we are thinking that with kind of uh, long, uh, short distance communication, for example, like Bluetooth low energy, we can put a lot of sensor on your body, connected to your body. So you have uh, ECG, you have. Uh, uh, your motion sensor, you have a temperature sensor to know what is the bias signal from your body. For example, um, likewise, the first page we are talking about, there will be a lot of, there will be a lot of uh, uh, old age people in the coming few years. Okay, practically, uh, like likewise in Taiwan, we have some um, some special people to take care of uh, those old people. But this kind of resource will be not in the version. So how, how should we do? Probably we give the old, old people kind of uh, uh, sensor, remote monitoring sensor with a mobile phone communication. Then when the family working in the working hours, they can know whether they're living well, still hot, is, uh, is running, temperature is okay, he don't have any special falling down or any accident or or, or location. So this kind of device will can reduce the cost of the society. So th 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 this is also kind of uh, application that we are thinking about. Putting the sensor not only on the devices but also around your body. So this is already some application for the sports purpose. But maybe it's not only for sports but also for the uh, standout or the normal human that you can have this kind of uh, uh, application on your body. Uh, this is one of example, very interesting uh, example that uh, I think when the time people look at this, they always think about a Kinect. So they think about this a camera with a infrared camera that you know your body moving. No, this is not this. This one we put a lot of, of uh, sensors on the guy's body. So with the data for all the position, because you, you know the exactly position, so you can compose the, the people movement in the real time. Okay. The good thing is that for kinetic kind of application, you can have uh, you cannot have a two. You can just have a one because the two, if they stand close by or uh, 
you will not see, right? So this kind of uh, application, you can have uh, 10 people, 15 people, as much as you want. And you don't care about the light environment. And your camera, you don't need to move around. You just need to put this one, this kind of shoes, uh, the closest for the body, then you know exactly what is this movement. And this is, can be kind of a uh, movie, you want to take a movie, so you can use this one to, to, to all forget me. But also some people that, uh, have, we have some cases that in the medical application, okay, uh, like uh, some people, they, they get hurt of their body. And they need to go to go to the hospital every week or every two three days to get recovery. But you you don't know what exactly uh, you need to get in front of the doctor. The doctor know okay you raise up your hand to certain distance you put it down. So they, they they need to see in front of you. Okay, with a video you are not so clear about the true angle or true distance you move. But probably with some special equipment like this, the doctor can remote may understand what's your movement by your body and the key can give you the instruction to keep a safe recovery exercise. Something like this application. Some people think about this already. This is also a kind of application that running today. Okay, uh, so for environment sensor, it's coming very soon that we have uh, pressure, humidity, and temperature in one device. So this will be many for the application to uh, make the people stay in a comfortable uh, environment to to feel comfortable for the environment uh, uh, condition. Okay, so this can be uh, applying for the air conditioning and also related to uh, some different location application. Okay, and. I, I do believe this kind of a sensor will increase more and more. But of course, it's not so easy because you use the same conductor to do the different kind of sensor. You need to invest a lot of uh, uh, technology to to create a new sensor. So it will be coming soon, but it will be be not so fast. Okay. So the last portion, uh, maybe more for commercial wise, that uh, how to. We, we saw this trend, but how to uh, complete the success in a sensor through the smart world? Maybe it's not for maybe many technical, but from a commercial point of view, uh, how to make this? Today we believe uh, technology will be not only driven by technology itself. Sometimes you need to link with the commercial or business because then you have an investment that you can get the return then make this industrial running faster. Okay, so uh, the thing is that uh, you need to have a stay, stay of the heart of the process. So today, we, from motion sensor, we see already that uh, the majority of uh, this supplier is the one for IDM. So it means that you need to control your process. You need to manage your, your, your process. This is one of the key information. And second, based on the information what we have in the past, uh, the demand can be very, very fast. The, the requirement not only for individual companies' growth, but also related to the requirement from the market. Uh, five years ago, we never heard about a G sensor, but today it's everywhere. Three years ago, gyroscope is new, but today it's coming everywhere for mobile phone and tablets. So you need to have a very, very strong capability to sustain the demand to, to catch this market. So you have a device, it's good, but it's not good enough. First, you need to you are able to make it produce the product in good quality in short time and to ensure that the price drop with this demand increasement so that is important and also we need to invest a lot of money on the on the process itself because today you have a vision and objective from application point of view but all in the same time the requirement for the different process will will change this this scenario so you, you, you must spend an effort to develop the core process to meet uh, this uh, fast requirement. Likewise, the TSP, a uh, lot of uh, digital uh, microprocessor makers, uh, people want to do this, but we are using this one mainly for MEMS. So we are, we, 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 we are the one to use this one very fast, already engaged for all the MEMS product here. In the meantime, you need to, have a capacity to sustain the requirement. 
so the demand is really very strong so the 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 yearly demand we are talking about the 5.5 billion units to 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 make this in a very short period so sometimes it's good that business taking off very fast but sometimes it's also a problem that the requirement for this will be an issue so to sustain this kind of uh, uh, dynamic requirement and the big volume what we have to do is that we need to have a backup plan so always for us we keep a two source in the world in-house to supply this kind of uh, fast growth demand so as I introduced previous slides uh, there's a requirement to to be capable for that so this is the last slide from my side to summarize the the message so to to do this one you need to have uh, uh, completely sensor hub and the fusion solution so not only the hardware the soul is equally important it's, an individual sensor is not important you need to combine all the sensors together to generate so you always need to think about what would be the real application what will be the the requirement from the from the customer sometimes it maybe it's coming from your core technology but sometimes it's not so you need to work closely with your partner or your customer to make this application come true so this is the the important industrial for the sensor the message for industrial for the sensor second uh, you need to have a complete sensor platform because today we see the problem to uh, in the world is that for different sensor, sometimes different if it belong to different company, then you have a problem to communicate each other. Everybody have long have their own proprietary information. It's not easy to communicate each other. So if you want to be fast to enable this market, you need to have a complete sensor or combination of module portfolio enabled to to support your customer's requirement. And also you need to um you need to have the production control by your own because suddenly your customer may tell you from 1k per month to 1 million per month so this kind of uh, big change you need to be able to sustain and then uh, uh, you need to have uh, okay the global ecosystem support because today we are also facing a lot of problem that initial from A then to come uh, in US then to Asia to China to many different kind of places so you are, you need to able to support this requirement and last is that as I introduced for this industrial the road, the volume is uh, running fast the price is decreasing also fast so what we can sustain or what you need to do is that you need to have a future roadmap with a future roadmap you can continue to gain and to make the new things then you are able to sustain in this market this market is really a very challenging and a tough market so from commercial point of view this is the main message that we can share with all the particip participants here to, from our experience okay so okay that's all my information thank you for your time and uh, if you have any question